Hello guys, Gaming at Heart here to talk about Tom Clancy's The Division. Specifically in this video, the skills we saw in the beta and how your skill level affects those abilities. We had four main abilities to use in the beta, so let's have a look at what they do and what benefits skill power does to improve them. First up is Pulse. Probably the most used ability in the beta, firstly because of how useful it is in both PV and PvP, because it was the first ability we started with and subsequently the only ability we were able to mod via upgrading the base of operations. The skill allows the player to send out a sort of sonar, highlighting enemy threats in range while also highlighting non-party players in the dark zone. All enemies that are marked are then susceptible to increased damage taken in a form of increased critical chance and crit damage, both of which are increased via skill power alongside reduced cooldown time. The three available mods are Recon Pack, which increases the scan range by 33% and highlights lootable containers, which can be really handy for learning those dark zone chest locations. Scrambler is the second mod, which protects the user and nearby allies from enemy player scans. Great for jumping rogues as the duration is a generous 25 seconds. And Tactical Scanner, which further increases critical chance and critical damage, but do note the increase in cooldown time to the previous mods. The Master mod here, like all other skills, can be applied in addition to one of the three previous mods, and it's obtainable through upgrading the relevant wing to a maximum level. For Pulse, this gives the user an early warning to the user and alerts the user to any incoming scans too. We'll see how this works in the full game, but it sounds like a great group agent tool in the DZ. Next down the medical tree is First Aid, a personal favourite and a must have for agents playing a support slash healer role while also allowing a secondary heal to med packs while roaming. First Aid heals all allies within a small radius and it has a pretty damn small area of just 3 meters. However, this ability also has two ways to deploy, either by tapping the map button to use directly on yourself, or by holding it down to fire at location for a pretty insane range. Skill power here increases the total heal both to the user and to allies, and pretty considerably, as you can see here with my current SP level tripling the total heal amount, while also reducing cooldown. Although we couldn't apply the available mods, we could see what we were starting with. Defibrillator. Adding a revive to a base ability, something I really wanted to try out in the game. I mean, a ranged revive in the dark zone would have saved some squad members on a number of times. Overdose increases the base heal by about 50%, while also adding an overheal mechanic which temporarily extends maximum health pools of those that don't need quite so much healing. But do notice the rain reduction here to only 2 meters, meaning you're going to have to be a lot more closely grouped up to get maximum benefits. Booster Shot is a third mod, temporarily increasing damage of affected targets while slightly reducing the self heal. Unfortunately there was no indication of how much of a damage boost we'll get. Mastering First Aid, called Extended Service, extends the bloom duration of the heal, allowing players to run through that lovely cloud of life giving. The two skills in the medical tree we didn't get hands on were Support Station, which will be a deployable heal station that allies can use to restore health. If you ever played WoW, think along the lines of a Priest Lightwell, and the signature ability, Recovery Link, being a wide range heal and revive, and by the looks of some of the videos, applying the overdose effect as well. Moving on to the tech line, and we only had access to the Sticky Bomb, a ranged explosive that sticks to most surfaces and is detonated remotely. With other blast ranges similar to grenades, skill power really packs more punch into its DPS ability. In this clip, more than tripling the base damage. As with all abilities, cooldown is also reduced. The first mod, Big Friendly Bomb, BFB, is certainly not friendly for your foes, increasing damage by a hefty 40%, but also adding a bleed proc and small area increase as well. But there were no details on how much damage this would incur regarding the bleed proc, but the cooldown is extended by about 50%. Flashbang almost removes the damage ability altogether, replacing it with a CC effect, but does also have a reduced cooldown. Useful particularly in PvE, but I expect to see this pop up in the Dark Zone too. Proximity Fuse then removes the need to manually detonate it at all, and extends the radius sec significantly. Again, great for leading angry mobs over, but it will be a great way for covering your tracks when either escaping rogue agents or roguing it yourself. 
Master Mob, I guess, is more of a PvE perk, possibly allowing you to coordinate stickies on larger groups of enemies. It just depends how difficult it is to spot to other real players. Locked from us in the tech tree includes a deployable turret, which lasts until the battery dies or is destroyed. That seeker mine that we've seen so many times in the videos, well, it's a mine that seeks enemies, detonating on proximity, and the signature tactical link, increasing damage and crit hit chance for all allied agents. The third and final skill tree, security, gives us a mitigation for both you and your party. What we managed to use was a ballistic shield. This equips a shield that absorbs damage from incoming fire directly at it. Watch out for those flankers. That's flankers, keeping it clean here, but only allows use of a sidearm. I love this ability and will probably have this equipped for most of the PvE side of the game. Not only does it mitigate a ton of damage, Dark Zone included, but the skill only drains with damage, not time. You can also discard it to start resetting at cooldown timer whenever you like. Downsides include a restriction on ability, your walk speed while your shield is out is limited, but it does hide while running or behind cover. You just can't have maximum speed and maximum strength at the same time. While equipped, you also gain a 10% damage increase to help with your sidearm limitation and a 10% damage resistance, while skill power absorbs more damage with usual cooldown. Mobs start with reactive targeting, increasing the absorb amount by about 30%, but your output damage bonus is reduced here, so a more defensive, take tanky option. But it does also stay a lighter shield, so hopefully some increased mobility as well. Assault shield is a more offensive option, grinding an additional 10% damage on top of that previous 10, and increased knockback from melee damage, increased accuracy, and faster reload speed. And kinetic breaker, which adds a healing mechanic when your shield absorbs damage, but you can also see here a boost to overall shield health too, at the expense of a bit of a longer cooldown. Master Mod grants your shield a repair ability when not taking damage, which could end up with an almost constant shield uptime. Awesome source for me. What Pandora's box kept away from us in the rest of the tree includes Smart's cover, buffing any available cover, giving bonus damage, output and damage mitigation for all allies behind it. A mod to note here is a health regeneration mechanic that can be added. Mobile cover, allowing the user to drop a small cover for one person but anywhere on the battlefield, it's going to be pretty awesome. And the signature which is survivor link increasing the allies group with damage resistance and a speed increase as well. Well there we have it, I've been making sure to determine the full ability list at release but what we can see is that there doesn't seem to be any cookie cutter builds or even specific abilities or specific roles to play. If you want to play that supportive healer, great, but do you want raw heals or added survivability? Do you want to take a CC ability for mitigation or smart cover to help those shooting from afar? The possible combinations seem to really come down to the individual playstyle rather than trying to pick tank, DPS, healer and to me that's damn attractive. This has been Gaming at Heart, please like, subscribe, comment below and hope to see you next time.